Okay, so I want to summarize a little bit from last time and talk about what mechanical energy is just to define it for you and then move on to the law of conservation of energy. Again, we're talking about in what ways is energy transformed and used. Right? So what is mechanical energy? Okay, now mechanical energy really is just the addition of two things. In other words, it's the total amount of kinetic energy and potential energy in a system or object. So total amount. In other words, ME, what we abbreviate it as, is KE plus PE. It's actually not that hard. So let's say something is moving and it has a kinetic energy of 400 joules and it has, uh, let's say it's above the ground a little bit and it has, excuse me, a potential energy of 200 joules the total mechanical energy would be 600 joules. Okay, now I'm not going to give them to you that simple. The example down here is a little bit closer to what I would say. So, uh, what's the total mechanical energy of a football that is traveling with a velocity of 25 meters per second at an average height of 2 meters? The mass is 0.4 kilograms. Okay. Now I'm going to draw a picture again, okay, so I'm going to imagine this football, okay, and it's traveling, it says with a velocity, okay, so I'm going to say velocity equals 25 meters per second, okay. it has an average height, okay, so that means above the ground, there's the ground, it has an average height of two meters. Okay, so we'll say H equals two meters. Uh, oh, and it says that the mass of the football is 0 0.4 kilograms. Okay, not bad. We have some good information. We have a velocity. We have a height. Okay, and we have a mass. Okay, all right, not bad, and we can actually color in that as the mass and color in the velocity arrow. Okay, okay, I'm just getting silly with the colors now. So, what is the total mechanical energy? All right, so we know M, we know V, we know H. We are looking for mechanical energy. Now, we know that the mechanical energy is the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. Ah, so we're going to have to start doing two-step problems, or even three-step problems here. Let me explain. We need to calculate the kinetic energy and the potential energy. Because this, we don't have the mechanical energy here. We have what we need to get it, but we don't actually have it written out. So, let me explain. Remember, kinetic energy is one-half mv squared. And, from the last vodcast, potential energy equals mgh. So actually, we only have to substitute and solve again. Watch this. Okay? So the kinetic energy, Ke right here. Oh, let me go get silly with the colors a little bit again. Okay? So the kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. And the potential energy okay, is mgh. Okay. So to find the mechanical energy, I have to take 1 half mv squared and add mgh. Okay. Let's do that. So 1 half mv squared. So I'm going to do 1 half times the mass, okay, which up here we said is 0.4. All right. So I'm going to do 1 half times 0 0.4 okay, times the velocity. Oh, our velocity we saw up there is 25 meters per second. I'm going to ignore the units just now for a little bit. And then I have to add mgh. Okay, so the mass, m, we said was 0 0.4. g Oh, we know that. That's a constant. That's a given. 
I'm gonna do I'm gonna make it simple again. I'm gonna do 10 meters per second squared. Okay. Oops, I said I was gonna ignore units, but I didn't. Okay. So I'll just cross those out. And let's use positive 10. Okay. I'm not worried about direction in this case. Right. So we'll go with 10. And h, what is h? Oh, we already figured that out. We figured out that h is 2 meters. Okay. All right, so let's do a little bit of math here. All right, All right so let's see. 1 half of 0.4 is 0 0.2, or 0 0.2. And that times 25 is, let me punch it in on my calculator, 25 times 0.2 equals five. All right, so we know that he has, or the football, has five joules of kinetic energy. The moving energy is five joules. Plus, we add this stuff here, all right? So what is 0.4 times 10? That's four, you just move the decimal over one. So we know that that's four. What's four times two? Duh, that's eight, okay? So eight joules. So we've got 5 joules plus 8 joules, which equals 13 joules of mechanical energy. Okay? So we did our givens, our unknown, our equations. We substituted. Then we solved. We're self-checking. 13 joules, does that seem reasonable? Well, these two answers are in similar uh, areas. So yeah, that seems reasonable. And we're going to show off. We're going to box it up. 13 joules. That is mechanical energy. The other way you could have done it is to just sort of figure out what the kinetic energy was and then figure out what the potential energy was and then just added them together and gotten 13 joules. Okay. All right. So last thing about energy is the law of conservation of energy. This is amazing. This right here is a rule of the universe, I like to say. Okay. Actually, I just made that up, but I do like to say it uh, right now, at least. It's a rule of the universe. Law of conservation of energy. It is a law. It's a law because it has never been disproven. It has never been shown to be wrong. We have never found a time when energy was not conserved, okay? or at least not a time that we didn't eventually figure out why. Um, what it says, and this is key, is that energy cannot, it cannot, cannot, cannot be created or destroyed. But it can change form. In other words, if you have a whole bunch of heat, okay, let's say you have a fire and the fire burns out, well, where did the energy, where did the thermal energy go? Well, it went to the air and the air started moving around and the heat in the air started spreading. Okay, it doesn't just disappear, okay, it goes somewhere. All right. Same thing, you can't just conjure up fire. The fire, the heat, that thermal energy, came from something. And it came from the chemical bonds within the wood that when you apply enough heat, they break apart and create more heat. That's really what it is. So it doesn't just come from nothing. Okay, so where did the chemical energy in the wood come from? Well, the wood used to be a tree, and the tree used the sunlight to put everything together so the energy in the wood actually originally came from the sun, which is quite cool because if you think about it, every time you burn gasoline, you're actually burning sunlight in a sense because the gasoline came from petroleum, oil that was found in the ground. Where did the oil in the ground come from? Well, millions and billions and billions of plankton uh, way back in the day, millions of years ago. That plankton was living and then it sort of settled to the bottom and other things settled to the bottom of the ocean floor. And then over millions of years, it got compressed and compressed over more stuff and it compressed and compressed. And then um, it sort of uh, turned into oil. Um, and so anyway, where did the energy come from? Well, the plankton used the energy from the sun to make sugars. And we see this every day. I mean, it, it's not a, not a crazy idea that I have. Um, it's, it's really quite remarkable that the sun 
fed the algae millions of years ago. The algae got compressed and compressed and compressed. Uh, and now it, there's the old algae is now oil, and we can actually figure out a way to burn that oil and release the energy that is from the sun millions of years ago. How cool is that? I, I think that's quite amazing. Okay? But the rule here okay, is that energy has to come from somewhere and or go somewhere. It can't just magically disappear. It can't just magically appear. The atomic bomb might be something that you think, oh, it magically appears. No. What happens is, with the atomic bomb, the uranium, if you were actually able to collect all the uranium from the bomb afterward, if you could do it, I mean, it kind of exploded, but, okay. Let's say you could actually collect all of the uranium afterward, and you could get its mass, you could weigh it. Well, the weight of the uranium afterward, as compared to what it was before the explosion, is actually a little bit less. It's actually about a paperclip's worth less massive because the mass of the uranium actually turned into energy. So the energy came from mass and we're going to talk more about this later on um, but it, that's quite mind-blowing in itself. But always remember, energy has to come from somewhere, from something, which is usually the sun, but it comes from somewhere or from something, and then it has to go somewhere. It can't just disappear or reappear. So energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can change form. I'll see you in class.